Okay guys, so let's talk again about context engineering. I have basically done something where you can do a custom documentation scrape. You can apply this however you want. I personally don't think that the best way is to one-shot things. I've talked about this a lot recently. Um, and I understand as well that context engineering isn't necessarily for uh, making something from scratch, but it's about making a new feature in an already existing system. If you are trying to create an entire system, an entire framework, everything, I really don't think there's anything better than vibe coding. Vibe coding in this case being, um, you know, building the first page and then the login page and then the admin page and then whatever, and then the first functionality, the second functionality, functionality, etc., etc. Let's add an agent, etc. blah, blah, blah. This for me is the way to go, right? But with that being said, I'm still going to show you guys what I discovered yesterday because I think it's worthy of a video for sure. So I tried an entirely new system here, okay? And I don't want to focus on the actual implementation in this video. This is what it implemented though, just so everybody knows, just so you can all see. I asked it to make an entire project and it kind of did it, but it mainly just focused on the small things that, you know, the, the back end stuff that I wasn't necessarily that interested. Now it has built a lot of this functionality. You can see here, this is good functionality. This is actually fine. It looks good for sure. Um, so there's a collection agent, an orchestrator agent, which orchestrates all of the different tasks. There's cron jobs. It's done a pretty phenomenal job. It, like, but th the problem is, is like, now, like, how do I implement this? How do I, like, get it working? How do I see it in action, etc., etc.? It's going to require a lot more effort and time from me to get this into a workable position. Now, I don't know if this is a quicker way than the way that I did it, which was, you know, spend one to two weeks vibe coding, right? So it's, it's hard to say, right? But this does seem like a pretty good implementation of everything that I asked it to do. Okay, so I'm going to show you exactly how I did this. Now, the main thing that I changed was the research. Okay, this is even beyond yesterday. I changed two things since yesterday. And I'll push this to the GitHub. Uh, feel free to use it. There will be a link in the description. Now, if you do want a little bit more help with this kind of stuff, um, then definitely check out the school community. I would definitely recommend it. Um, here, Claude Code, which is medium code. I have a pretty good intro to Claude Code how I use it, et cetera, et cetera. And then obviously there's this context engineering template, which we're talking about today. But there's also this here, which is how I build intelligent AI apps that make decisions and get outside resources and use JSON to make decisions, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want that kind of secret source, or if you just want a little bit more help with this kind of stuff, whether that be Docker, GitHub, whatever, then definitely check out the school community. It'll be the first link in the description of this video. Make sure that I'm still splashing on old school RuneScape. <laughs> no XP waste, hashtag no XP waste. Okay, so let's get into this. So the two things that I changed, right, is first of all, it now creates a skeleton and then it creates production ready code. Okay, I would probably change this slightly. I wasn't too impressed with this one here. And then it does tests, right? So this kind of worked, it kind of didn't. I'd probably get rid of the phase three um, in future iterations. So just have two phases where production is like everything in initial.md has to be implemented. Um, whereas phase one is just skeleton code. Now, one good thing about this is just by changing this, instead of just getting placeholder code, right? I showed you before the agents here. Last time I did this, it created the orchestrator agent and then it created a placeholder product optimizing agent but it looks like it's actually given me production ready code this time. So this is a huge step forward in this process for sure. Now, the other thing that I changed and the other thing that I think people are going to find very, very interesting about this method is the research. Again, I, I changed it again. So if I open up research here, you'll see Anthropic, Gina, OpenAI, Pydantic AI, SEO APIs, and Shopify. If I open any of these, you'll see that it has basically created an LLM.txt, which it can refer to at any time to understand how to do whatever it needs to do, right? 
So this is super, super cool, super, super interesting. You can just see how much detail there actually is here. Huge amounts of detail, like it's actually crazy how much detail there is. And it should just have access to this at any time that it needs to uh, use it. Looks like the Shopify one didn't work actually. Okay, no, it did here. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see this in action. I'm not gonna actually build anything. I've already built something. Um, and it's definitely an improvement on the last iteration, but I still think there's work to do. Just so you know, the way that you edit this kind of stuff, like how did I get it to produce three documents? You just have to edit the Claude.md, really. That's the main thing to edit. So you can see here, create three document.md files, phase one, two, and three. So I'm just gonna change this now because I don't think that worked particularly well. So we'll just do phase one and phase two. Phase one is skeleton code. Phase two is complete production ready code with all features and all necessary front end and back end implementations to, to use as a production ready tool. Okay, so I've just changed that slightly, so we'll just put two here. And then this is what I will push to GitHub, uh, and I'll be testing this again. So let's see how this works. There is a slight prompt to this. It's not much. It's just this tiny little bit here. So let's just see how this works. Let's um, exit out here. Um, yeah, one of the problems is obviously we have a lot of code here. I think what I'll do is I'll just put these inside don't look in here from yesterday. Um, and then maybe delete research. And delete memory. Okay. So I, I, I also made this new folder, or it made this new folder. So let's just run this real quick. So first of all, we do Claude dangerously run. What the hell? I don't know what that is with Claude, but sometimes you have to hit, you have to exit out. I'm really not sure why. Okay, so we have this here. This is the first one, right? This is the first prompt. So we feed this to, oh, wait, I need to obviously CD into the correct place. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, there we go. Okay, so we send this, right? And then it reads that prompt and it slightly changes its behavior here, which we'll see in just a second. So first of all, it, it reads generate PRP, which again, I've slightly changed since yesterday, but nothing major. Uh, although actually thinking about it, I probably need to remove, yeah, I need to remove this. So I'm just showing you guys how I change this. Let's see if that was actually affected. I'd be curious to know. So yeah, it does actually read the generate uh, MD. So what we do is we restart here and then we just send the same prompt. It's like talking to a completely fresh environment, right? So this should be a slightly different, it should have, say 88 lines, perfect. So you can see that it's now reading a different thing, right? So it's a whole different like system because we've just slightly changed the system, we now have this. Now, the reason I did that is because it already builds tests, so it's kind of pointless to, to have an entire phase for testing. Two-phase approach, generate skeleton code, complete production ready code. Okay, good. Now we do the generate command. Let's just do it uh, like this, just to make sure, yeah, PRP initial button D, there we go. And then once it gets to the research phase, this is the really, really cool update, right? This is in the prompting as well. So if I go to Claude.md, uh, you'll see somewhere for maximum efficiency whenever you need to perform multiple independent operations such as research, invoke all, I should say invoke, but I'm sure it understands. Invoke all relevant tools simultaneously rather than sequentially. So as soon as it starts the research, so it's gonna analyze code base. This is just because it's, um, 
it's basically it, it it's this system is to add a new feature to a currently existing system, right? So, oh wait, shit! <sighs> Don't do that. There is no existing code. Just get on the, the reset part. Yeah, so it read the uh, PHP agency framework. I was hoping it wouldn't read that, but that's okay. Normally, you guys, obviously, you wouldn't have this lying around from the last time that you generated something. Okay, so once it starts the research here, as soon as it says, okay, I'm going to start researching, this is the really, really cool part of this. Okay, so look, I'm going to press exit there, and I'm going to say, can you spin up multiple agents like that? And then hopefully it's going to, um, I'm not sure what it's doing here. Oh yeah. Okay. So there we go. It's doing genus scrapes, right? And then it messed this up yes, yesterday as well. Okay. So you can see here now it's creating new directories, right? And then it's going to store all of this, uh, research data because it scrapes the first page, right? And when you scrape the first page of something like a documentation, Normally, it then gives you access to all of the other pages as well. So you can see it just created all of these folders here, right? If we open this one, for example, open AI, we have an overview right here. Bang, look at that. So now this is stored, and this actually has um, code in it. Model 4.1. And then it really starts to go to town, right? And it starts to create an LLM.txt custom on your computer, right, locally in the project. And then you build or you execute the PRD, PRP inside this Claude code context after running a slash compact. So when it's finished researching, you run slash compact, and then it will create two .md files inside, um, inside the PRP directory, I believe that's where it goes. So if we go back to don't look in here, you can see there, there were three before. This time it will create two. And what you do is you, you run execute dash PRP for each one, right? So you run it for phase one and then you run it for phase two in this case. Okay, so like I've slightly changed the prompt here, guys. I'm going to send this to you, everyone. Have a play with it. Let me know what you think. But I've just added this little part of the prompt here with prompt one, when you're starting, it says all separate pages must be stored in slash research technology directories with individual .md files, okay? So what that should do is, like I showed you at the beginning of the video, it should create an LLM.txt as a reference, reference point so that any point it can just check. It's basically context seven with completely up-to-date data. Um, and then, one final part of this, which I actually haven't implemented yet, is to mention in Claude.md. I'll just do this now. Um, this needs testing, guys. The, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm live testing these things, okay? This will be updated constantly. It's just one of those things, guys. I like to test live with you guys. People give me suggestions in the comments, etc., etc. So I'm just going to add this right here where it's going to say, uh, please, um, no, um, refer to research directory before implementing any feature that uses um, something that requires documentation, refer to the relevant, dot, relevant directory inside research. Um, directory and use the .md files to ensure your coding with great accuracy. Never assume knowledge of a third party API. Instead, always use the uh, documentation examples, which are completely up to date. So the good thing about the system here that um, now exists is you can't see it very well here. Well, I guess maybe you can. Um, this is the most up-to-date information you, you can get, right? It's, um, it's direct from their website. It's not like Context 7 or whatever. It's literally just a, a LLM scrape 
of not even an LLM scrape, but a, a Gina scrape of the current documentation. Now I know this doesn't look great. This didn't work fully because I forgot to add this little part of the prompt. But basically what it should do is what I showed you at the beginning, which was just create a huge amount of um, research files, right? I'm gonna keep iterating upon this for people that say, oh, you, you said that this system didn't work and then you're working on it anyway. Um, all I meant was when the system didn't work is I wasn't a fan of the research phase. The other phases were fine. It was a pretty cool system to be honest with you. I am focusing specifically on the research part because that was the part that I found lacking and then slightly changing the system to use uh, skeleton and then production ready code. I would say this is pretty much good to go now. Uh, I'm going to keep testing, keep iterating, and I'll keep you guys updated as we go. I'll leave the video there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're one hell of a legend. And I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.